All right, here are the answers to station number four. We're only going to talk about the back of your sheet that you're going to be putting in your pocket to take home because the first part should have been double checked with the information that was at your station with your lab members. All right, let's look at uh, the directions for hammering out the question. Now, in this case, we're always going to be moving from a 1N number to a 2N number. Let's just review some vocabulary. 1N means the same thing as haploid, so it's half the number of chromosomes that you should have. 2N means diploid, which means twice the number. So 2N obviously is twice the amount of 1N. Now, whenever we're going from 1N to 2N or from 2N to 1N, there are specific, uh, there are specific techniques or math techniques that we're going to apply. So we're either going to be dividing by 2 or we're going to be multiplying by 2. Now, Ms. Hansen shared with you some interesting information, some word art to help you remember which way to go. So if you have to go from 1N to 2N, Ms. Hansen told you to simply turn the 1 into an X. When you turn the 1 into an X, it means multiplication, so you're going to multiply by 2. Now, what if you were given 2N and you had to figure out your 1N number? In this case, Ms. Hansen said to simply turn the 2 into a division symbol. So you know you're going to be dividing by 2. So these are the, um, these are the steps that we're going to use to help us understand how to answer these questions. All right, so let's go ahead and look at question number 1. Question number 1 says, if the sperm cell of a fish contains 12 chromosomes, so I'm going to underline this, and it says we have 12 chromosomes in a sperm cell. So we need to ask ourselves, are sperm haploid or diploid? Well, sperm cells are sex cells, and we know sex cells always have half the number of chromosomes. So this is my haploid number. So I know that 12 is 1N. So I'm going to write that down here so that I don't get confused. Then it asks how many chromosomes would be found in the diploid cell of that fish. So I know my 1N number. I have to figure out my 2N number. Now to help me remember what to do, whenever I have a 1N number, I'm going to put an X, make it an X, so I know that I'm going to be multiplying by 2. So I'm going to take my number 12, multiply it by 2, which gives me... 24. So the correct answer should be D for number 1. Alright, let's go ahead and look at question number 2. For question number 2, it says, if an organism has a diploid number of 28, so 28 is my 2N number. So I've been given my 2N number. I'm going to write that down so that I don't get confused. I want to know how many chromosomes would be found in an unfertilized egg. So my unfertilized egg is going to be my 1N or my haploid number. So this is the number that is an unknown. So I'm going to be going from 2N to 1N. To help me remember what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my word art and turn my 2 into a division symbol so that I know I'm going to divide by 2 to find my answer. So my answer should be 28 divided by 2, and if I do my math correctly, I know that 28 divided by 2 should be 14, so the answer should be B. Let's look at question number 3. For number 3, it says, in a mouse egg cell containing 30 chromosomes, so 30 chromosomes are found in an egg cell. We know egg cells are gametes or sex cells. These guys are always going to be haploid, so this is going to be my 1N number. So I'm going to write that down here so I don't get confused. Is fertilized, how many chromosomes would be in a zygote? Where a zygote is always going to be 2N because a zygote only forms when an egg and a sperm fuse come together in an act of fertilization um, to start the life process. So I know that I'm going to be going from 1N to 2N. And so that I don't get confused, I'm going to use my word art. I'm going to put a a line through that so it looks like a multiplication symbol. So I know I'm going to do 30 times 2. 30 times 2 equals 60, so the correct answer to number 3 should be D. All right, let's jump down to question number 4. For number 4, it says, horses have 64 chromosomes in each of their hair cells. Well, we know we don't make babies with hair cells. So these guys have to be 2N. That's my total number. So I'm going to write my key, 2N equals 64. How many chromosomes should be in a gamete? Gametes are always 1N. It never changes. But this is the number that I don't know. So I'm going to write 2N. Whoops. I'm going to write 2N. And we're going to 1N. And I'm going to use my word art again, turn this into a multiplication, or I'm sorry, a division symbol. So I know to find my answer, I'm going to be 
dividing by 2. So 64 divided by 2 gives us 32. So the correct answer should be B. For number five, it says in flowers that have 100 chromosomes that are found in their haploid pollen cells, haploid is 1n, so I know this is my 1n number, so I'm going to write 1n equals 100. How many chromosomes will be found in the root cells? Root cells are body cells, so they're not used for making babies, so we know that's going to be 2n, and that's our unknown. So let me go ahead and write 1n. We're trying to figure out 2n. We're going to use our word art again turn this into a multiplication symbol so I know I'm going to be multiplying by 2. So 100 times 2 should be 200. So the correct answer should be D. All right, so for number 6 it says in species Ursus has 70 chromosomes in each somatic cell. Somatic cells are body cells. That's important. Body cells are always 2n. So I know that 70 equals my 2n number. How many chromosomes would they get from their father? So I'm looking for the 1n number. That is my unknown in this case. So I'm going to go from 2n to 1n. And when I do that, I'm going to use my word art again, turn the 2 into a division, or a division symbol. So it's going to be divided by 2. So I'm going to take 70 divided by 2, and that should give me 35. So the correct answer should be B. If you still need help with this, please make sure that you're reviewing your notes. We did a number of practice problems that are found on various day sheets. You can just go to biomonsters.com, click on where it says what we did in class today, and click along the side for the topics. You can find topics for diploid and haploid, and there are lots of practice problems as well as answers. So make sure that you're using your time wisely, and if you're still having trouble, come and see us. We'd love to help you.